Bocha, a ball game of strategy and accuracy. So what is Bocha? Well, it is a Paralympic precision ball sport intended for athletes with physical impairments. It is similar to games like bocce ball and curling for reference. When Bocha was first invented, it was intended to be played by people with cerebral palsy. Over time, the sport now includes athletes with a variety of physical impairments. The game is contested at a local, national, and international level. Bocha is one of two Paralympic sports with no Olympic equivalent, the other being goalball. Bocha became an official Paralympic sport in 1984. So how do you play? Well, it is a two-sided competition executed by propelling leather balls as close to a target ball known as the jack. But what's the aim of the game? You want to get as many of your balls as close to the jack as possible to gain points and in the end have more points than your opponent. There are two sides, red and blue, and each side has six playing balls. Competitors compete in four to six rounds and aim to gain points each round. The game begins by one side throwing the jack onto the court. This is decided by a coin flip. That side then launches their first ball, followed by the competitor launching their first ball. Whichever ball is further from the jack throws again. That side continues playing until they get a ball closer to the jack than their opponent, or if they use all six of their balls. Once either scenario occurs, it then becomes the opponent's turn. This continues back and forth until all 12 game balls have been thrown. Bocha is typically played on a converted wooden basketball or volleyball court. The dimensions of the court are seen here. There are six spots reserved as the throwing area. Athletes must stay completely within their designated throwing spots while playing, but are allowed to approach the balls in between throws to get a better view of the playing area. The V-shaped line marks the point at which the balls must pass while playing. Anything before that, that line falls in the invalid area. The cross mark in the center is used if a jack must be reoriented reoriented if it is played out of bounds or in the case of a tie break. So how do you win? At the end of each round, one point is given to whichever team has a ball closest to the jack. Additional points are given for each ball that is closer to the jack than any opposition's balls. Teams can earn between one to six points per round. This continues for four to six rounds depending on the number of players per team. Whichever team has the most cumulative points from all the rounds wins. The game is structured to allow for three types of competition, individual, pairs, or teams. Individual competition has two sides with one player per side. Each player has six balls and the game has four rounds. Each player will begin the round by throwing the jack twice. Paired competition has two sides with two players for each team. Each player has three balls and the game has four rounds. Each player will begin the round by throwing the jack once. Team style competition has two sides and is played with three players for each team. Each player has two balls. In team competitions, there are six rounds, allowing for each player to begin a round by throwing the jack once. We are going to watch a simulated version of an individual styled game. Red is going to start the round by throwing the jack first. Red will then throw their ball first and blue will throw their first ball next. Whichever ball is further throws again and the round will play until all balls are used. This game would typically have four rounds, but we are only going to watch one round being played. We see the jack is thrown first, followed by the first red ball, then the first blue ball. Blue was further, so they throw again. Blue now has a ball closer to the jack, then red, so it is now red's turn and the game continues. Back and forth until each side uses all six of their balls. This is the final board at the end of the round. There are two blue balls closest to the jack, meaning blue wins the round and earns two points for that round. This is an example of four final boards. We see blue won round one with one point. Red then won round two with three points, followed by blue winning both rounds three and four with three and two points respectively. The chart on the side displays this, and we see that blue has won the game with six points and red with three. Bocha requires very little equipment, the primary items being the playing balls themselves. These balls are made of leather and are slightly larger than a tennis ball. They are available in different grades of softness and hardness. These changes affect the way the ball is thrown and lands. Players select which ball they use purposefully to execute a desired game strategy. The balls can be propelled in a variety of ways. Players using their hands may throw overhand, underhand, dart style, or a pendulum motion to name a few. Players using their feet can only do so if they are part of the BC1 class, which will be discussed later. 
For players incapable of using their arms or legs to propel their ball can use a ramp designed specifically for bocha. The ball is propelled down the ramp and is released with the player's hand, elbow, head, or a pointer. Pointers can be attached to players' heads, held in players' mouths, or held with their hand. Only players in the BC3 class use pointers and ramps. Here are some examples of players using their hands. These are examples of players using their feet. The next slides show examples of players using ramps and pointers to play. For players part of the BC3 class who are unable to re release the ball independently may have a sport assistant. Sport assistants can help with adjusting the ramp as instructed by the player or to stabilize a player's chair. They are also allowed to retrieve and return balls back to players if requested. Sport assistants are not permitted to look at the court and must keep their back facing the game at all times. Here are examples of a sport assistant helping a BC3 class player with the ramping method. In this video, you see the player using different methods of ramps and pointers to knock the ball down. We also see the sport assistant placing the ball where the player requests while always facing away from the game. This is to ensure that the sport assistant is not interfering with the game. Precision is key when releasing the ball down the ramp to ensure it goes where the player is aiming. Players make use of different heights on the ramp to adjust the speed and velocity of the ball down the ramp as seen here. So who is allowed to play bocha? Well, bocha is one of the only sports in the Paralympics that permits mixed gender games, allowing men and women to play against one another, and it is open to any age group. In regards to competitive national or international levels, athletes must have a disability and use a wheelchair as a result of cerebral palsy or another neurological condition with similar effects like muscular dystrophy or a traumatic brain injury. Disabilities are assessed and players are then assigned to a corresponding class. This allows players to compete against athletes with a similar level of physical functionality. On the non-competitive community level, Bolcha is open to anyone with any type of disability, including learning disabilities, milder movement disabilities, or visual impairments. Socially, Bolcha is open to anyone. Bolcha players are classified into four different classes as defined by the Paralympic Committee. The first class, BC1, all athletes must have severe activity limitation and are typically dependent on a powered wheelchair. They are allowed to use both hands and feet and are allowed a sport assistant to help stabilize chairs and retrieve balls. The second class, BC2 players, have better trunk and arm function than those in the BC1 class. Players have greater use of their arms and hands, allowing them to throw the ball in a variety of ways. They are not allowed a sport assistant. The third class is BC3. In this class, players have the most severe impairments and have significant limitations in arm and leg functions and poor or no trunk control. Players are unable to consistently grasp or release the ball and are unable to propel the ball consistently into the field of play. These players are allowed to use a ramp and a pointer with the help of a sport assistant. The fourth class is BC4. This class is meant for players with non-cerebral impairments that impact their coordination. Players typically have severe locomotor dysfunction in all four extremities as well as poor trunk control. Players demonstrate sufficient dexterity to throw the ball and are not eligible for a sport assistant. 
In this personal video, you can see how this boy who is a quadruple amputee is able to grasp and throw the ball, which shows how people with a variety of disabilities are able to play bocha. The Paralympic Committee defines eligible impairment types as listed here. So how is bocha an adaptive sport? The use of adaptive equipment allows players with a variety of severe impairments to participate and accommodate to players' strengths. The game is meant to enable players and can be modified to suit a variety of needs. Any person, regardless of dis disability, can play bocha somehow. Bocha is not only a fun activity, but is incredibly beneficial in various ways. The therapeutic ben benefits are abundant since the sport requires extreme accuracy, muscle control, high amounts of focus and con concentration, spatial awareness, hand-eye coordination, and strategic planning, to name a few. Along with therapeutic benefits, bocha is very beneficial for an individual's lifestyle. It promotes confidence, teamwork, socialization, independence, and welcomes a greater community of support, support and acceptance. Bocha is fun and exciting as well as strategic and competitive. It has built an international community and is completed on the world stage, giving incredible opportunities to people with disabilities everywhere. Thank you.